Good morning. <clears throat> All right, I gave you a paper copy of the problem statement that we're continuing. And the reason why I did that is uh, I thought it just might be easier for you to see what my initial guess flow rates are if it's there on, pe on paper. Um, so we'll come to that in just a minute. Uh, before we do, let's look at these announcements here. Oh, that's got to be wrong, right? I think I didn't update the announcements to reflect the correct dates here because Tuesday, February 13th, that just doesn't make any sense. So let's pop. All right, sorry for that. Um, so the next assignment does include some uh, Hardy Cross implementation where you're going to be uh, making use of the demonstration we're going through today. So that's due a week from today. Well, we're going to continue the uh, pipe network example that we didn't complete yesterday and then do additional practice on the Hayes and Williams equation. Um, any questions before we pick back up on the example? All right, so you have in front of you the uh, paper version of the uh, problem statement. And uh, you can continue with your assumed flow directions. But um, please, at first, just take a look at mine and see if the uh, flow directions that I've assumed make sense to you. So what I'm saying is that the water comes in at junction A, and I'm just splitting it 50-50 between the two pipes as an initial guess. And uh, so that means that 0.5 cubic meters per second goes AF, 0.5 goes AB. And then we'll do the same thing with the incoming flow at junction D, just splitting it equally. So 0.6 DF, 0.6 DC. And then at junction F, we have the two predefined flows coming in, and that has to equal the flow going out. So FE is 1.1. Let's see, where else do we know what has to be happening? We know in EC that there has to be 0.5 coming in. Otherwise, there wouldn't be enough flow to satisfy the outflow at E. So that means that we have to have 0.5 going inbound towards E from junction C. And then that tells us how much is remaining in pipe CB because it was 0.6 and then we lose 0.5, so that means there's 0.1 remaining. And now everything's satisfied. All of the flow junctions are balanced. So that's just a refresher on how we ensure that the continuity equation in equals out is valid at each junction. Any questions about this before we move forward? Because it's not trivial. And every semester, I see people continuing to make mistakes on flow balance. And so I know that it's something that uh, takes a little bit of getting accustomed to before it, it comes naturally. So we don't need to rush through it. All right. Um, now, we don't know necessarily um, what the flows actually are going to be in this first iteration. But that's what we're working towards. And so. What we can do is uh, set up the spreadsheet according to the uh, column titles that we were given in the student start file. Remember that this is a spreadsheet that was on MU Online. And um, so all of these pipes have the same K sub S value of 0 0.0003. We input the diameters according to uh, the given data. The cross-sectional areas come from the diameters, the length that's given. Now this first F value round is just based on the fully turbulent flow assumption. And so we're eliminating the Reynolds number. And uh, I suppose we could calculate it based on the flow rates and velocities over here. But let's just uh, forget about that for now and start with the fully turbulent flow assumption and then um, in the second round, we'll adjust with the actual velocities. So I don't think we were all on the same page when we uh, left off. So let me give you a moment to make sure that everybody's up to this for the first iteration. And then we'll continue with uh, inputting the flow rates. Any questions at all so far? All right, 
So you have the, uh, the guest flow rates that I used and the ones that I'm going to put in. You're welcome to proceed with your own guest flow rates if you like. But I'm going to put in for pipe AB, uh, that was the one where it's 0.5 BC. Remember, clockwise is positive. So the uh, assumed flow direction of BC, so if the flow is going from C to B and clockwise is positive, then that means this is a negative flow rate because it's going up and clockwise would be down. So that's why I'm going to put a negative sign in here. So negative 0.1 is the flow through pipe BC. 0.5, negative 1.1 and negative 0.5. All right. So these are the uh, flow rates in the initial, just loop one, iteration one. And then we'll start doing the calculations because kind of the, uh, the magic formula that makes all of this work that we saw last time is this. Let me paste that into the spreadsheet because we're going to be using it in just a bit. So we need to have both the numerator and the denominator calculated. So let's start with this. R times Q times the absolute value of Q. Okay. So we need to know that for each pipe. And this network's considerably more complicated than the first example we saw, which only had five pipes. This is going to be a lot more complicated, but what we'll see is that the solution still converges in just a few iterations, and the same process applies, regardless of how many pipes are in the loop. Okay, so now N times R times the absolute value of Q. Okay. Now what's the unfortunate thing about this delta Q column? Is that we have to type the equation in as many times as we've got rows. Otherwise, when we do the relative reference paste into subsequent iterations, things aren't going to work out the way that we want. So we have to go ahead and type that in. So equals minus, oh wait, we don't have the sums yet. So we need to sum all of these. So the sum of these and the sum of above. And I put it in italics just to help to uh, clarify that that's different than the numbers above it, that this is in fact the sum. So now we want to find the uh, delta Q. So it's going to be the minus the sum of the RQ absolute value of Q divided by the sum of NR absolute value of Q. So you can always uh, take a look later on after the class. Okay, so delta Q represents the first change that we need to make to bring the uh, flow rates closer to equilibrium within the loop so that we're not violating continuity. Okay, so the corrected Q is the initial guess plus the change. We're just adding the original guess Q and the change. Okay, and so then I can drag that formula down through all of the pipes that are in this loop. And then the absolute value of the velocity, we need to calculate that so that we have an estimation of the Reynolds number later on. Okay, so that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 
the absolute value of the flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area. And we have to do the absolute value there to get rid of the minus sign that we have in some of these uh, flow rates. The minus sign, you know, reflecting direction. We don't need that if we're just calculating the uh, Reynolds number. And then Reynolds number is velocity times the diameter divided by kinematic viscosity. So 1E minus 6. So 10 to the minus 6 meter squared per second. So now we've got Reynolds numbers. And this percent change we're using to uh, be an indicator of when our solution is converged. And we're talking about the percent change in the flow rate. And we're assuming that this corrected Q is closer to the truth. So it's going to be the corrected Q minus this initial Q divided by the corrected Q times 100. And that'll give us the percent change within the uh, adjustment. Okay. So again, I'm going to pause, give you a minute to make sure that we've got everything in common for this first loop. If you're using your own flow numbers, then that's okay. But the structure of your solution should mirror mine eventually we'll get the same answers. Okay, so as we move forward to the next uh, iteration, one of the mistakes people make frequently is the forgetting the sign flip for common pipes, and the other one's related. It's also those common pipes. What's the other thing that we have to remember to do when we're putting in the flow rates for the pipe that's also in another loop? Use the updated queue. Use the most recent queue value. All right, so you might write a note to yourself never to forget those, and you'll avoid 80% of the mistakes that I see when people are applying this method. All right, so let's move now. We're still on uh, iteration one, but let's look at the second loop. So loop two has pipes CD, CE, EF, and DF. Four pipes, all of the same uh, K sub S values as previously, so we just paste that over. The diameters of the pipes are 0.85 meters, 0.60, 0.70 and 0.50. And we can just copy and paste to get the cross-sectional area formula applied down for these new diameters. We do have to key in manually the correct lengths though, 80 meters, 150 meters, 80, and 200 meters. And then the uh, F values we can uh, do the same thing, just use the fully turbulent flow assumption. We can copy and paste so that the formula is based on this initial pipe data. Okay, R, let's see, R is a function of just all of these constants we already have, and so we can also copy and paste the relative roughness, excuse me, the uh, relative reference to the R values, and N is 2. Remember that N value means that you're using the Darcy-Wiesbach friction formula, because in Darcy-Wiesbach, you take the flow rate or flow velocity to the power of 2 in order to estimate the head losses, whereas in the Hayes and Williams equation, the exponent factor is 1.85. So here we're using 2 as the exponent factor. Now this is where we need to be careful. I'm going to do something that I suggested before, and I'm going to bold the common pipe. So the common pipe is EF and 
CE. So CE and EF. I'm going to bold that just so I never lose track. CE and EF are my common pipes. And that's going to be a reminder that I don't just put in my initial flow guess for those two pipes. I do put in the initial flow guess for CD and DF. So you have the paper handout there. You can see that my initial guess for CD uh, in the context of loop 2, remember clockwise positive, so it's going to be negative 0.6 was my initial flow guess for that one. Let's go down here to DF. So DF was... Uh, this pipe. So I said clockwise positive, so that's going to be positive 0.6. So 0 0.6 for that one. Now these are the ones where I'm going to avoid the mistake. And so rather than typing in my initial flow guess, I'm going to say it's equals minus of whatever we came up with coming out of the other loop. So CE, where's my good flow rate for that. So it's this. It's the negative of the previous guess. Why negative? Well, let's look at pipe CE. Here's pipe CE. When I'm in loop one, that flow direction from C to E is positive. Because think about clockwise positive. C to E is clockwise here in loop one. But now from the perspective of loop two, C to E is counterclockwise, and so that's a negative value. So that's why I have to put in the minus when I refer to the updated flow rate. And then the same thing equals minus for pipe EF. So those should be my initial flow rates for this iteration. And this is where it gets pleasant because we don't have to actually uh, type the equation in again. I can just copy these, control C and control V to paste. I do want to uh, sum only the four that's above it. So I won't, sum, I won't copy over the sum function because the sum function before was including more values than I want in this one. Okay. So I'm summing them up. And then I'm going to type this formula. right in here. So uh, I'll put it there. Mm, there. Equals minus this divided by that and so on. So then the corrected Q is the Q plus delta Q. Do you see why I'm not showing all of the accuracy? Uh, no, this is the perfect time to make a point that it would be harder for you to follow what I'm doing on the screen if the numbers looked like this. So just for a moment. Glance up at the screen. If all the numbers looked like that, it would be harder for you to know if you have the same thing as me as if I'm just doing this. And so carry that principle with you when you're doing a spreadsheet and submitting it, submitting your work for an exam or for uh, homework. All the unnecessary detail just makes it harder to follow your solution. So only show the level of detail that has some meaning. In this case, I think three digits is plenty. Okay, we can copy the formula for the absolute value of the velocity and the Reynolds numbers and the percent change. All right. So now we've completed the first iteration. Things are going to get really simple and automated in the second iteration with one exception. 
The one exception is that we need to switch over and no longer use fully turbulent flow and begin using the uh, full Jane equation. So rather than just copying and pasting these F values, I'm going to take the time to put in the, uh, the true and correct Jane equation for estimating my F. So I can copy and paste all of this, all this physical data about the pipes. And so control C and control V. And I'm going to rename that iteration 2. But then here for the F values, use the full Jane equation. Okay, so let me pause for just a moment, circulate around and see if there are any questions. All right, so now we're going to use the uh, actual Jane equation rather than the fully turbulent flow for the F value on the second iteration. So 1.325 divided by the logarithm. I guess I don't need two parentheses. Logarithm of k sub s divided by 3.7 divided by d. So now all of that represents this first term. And I can cut plus. I don't have to put any extra parentheses. By doing that double divided by, one of the reasons I like that trick is that then you don't have as many parentheses. And I think that's what kind of sometimes makes entering formulas in Excel a little tricky. Divided by 5.74 uh, divided by the Reynolds number to the 0.9 power. The Reynolds number we're going to use is the previous Reynolds number. So the flow rate up here. All right, so this Reynolds number to the power of 0.9. And now we're ready to square it. Let me give you a moment to take it all in. Okay, so this F value you can see is a little bit different from the F value when we were assuming fully turbulent flow. And it's more than just the updated uh, flow rate. It's, we're using the full version of the uh, Jane equation now. And you can drag that down through all of them. The text seems smaller. That's weird. Uh, I guess I had formatted it weird. So let's make it back up to size 11. I move this Jane equation out of the way. I might need it later, so I'm not going to just delete it. OK, the R values. Um, oh, I, can, I guess I can drag that uh, F value down through both loops. So let's do that through both loops. OK. Now, I realize that we're not using, strictly speaking, the most recently updated Reynolds number. So CE, for example, it's using this Reynolds number. But our most recent version of the Reynolds number is over here. That's OK. In the end, by the time we get to iteration 4, uh, the Reynolds numbers are going to be equal. So it won't matter in the end. If I really wanted to be uh, sneaky about it, though, I could just adjust the reference of this Reynolds number down here to uh, this CE, I might as well since I mentioned it, and this version of EF, my most recently updated Reynolds number is actually the one, oh, you, sometimes it's got to be in exactly the right spot. There it is. All right. Here's the most recent version of EF. Okay, so now the R values, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the whole thing and then go in and selectively fix the uh, flow rate references that I need to adjust. So I've selected the entire, all the calculations, and I'm copying with control C, pasting with control V, and now the references I need to fix are the flow rate references. You see it just has all of my initial flow rates in there. So Okay, AB should be looking at the most recent AB I have is this flow rate. 
And since it's in the same perspective, I don't have to put the minus sign. Okay, the most recent BC that I have is this one. The most recent CE, since it's bold, that gives me the warning I need to have the minus sign and use this CE. So the other loop, since it's one of those common pipes. Likewise, with pipe EF, okay, pipe AF, here's my most recent AF flow rate, pipe CD, CE, it's bold, I need to be cautious here. My most recent version of CE is in the same iteration I'm working on. Likewise with pipe EF, I think it was already looking in the right spot for that one. And then lastly, DF, my best DF gas is right there. All right. Your numbers might be slightly different than these sums, depending on whether or not you fix the references to uh, the Reynolds number for the F value, but you know, don't sweat that because it'll all come out in subsequent iterations as the uh, input and output Reynolds numbers are the same. What you'll notice, though, is the solution converging. You know, our percent differences are getting a lot smaller. The one exception is this pipe that has so little flow to begin with that any change on a percent basis looks really big. So it has very little flow rate. So even when the change is relatively small, it has a big effect on that particular pipe. Let me pause for a moment. All right, so the great thing is that once you have the second iteration set up, then the third iteration is just strictly a copy-paste. The only thing you have to change is the iteration number. So let me zoom out a little bit for perspective. And what I'm going to do is highlight the entire iteration and Control-C, and then just immediately below it, paste it. So that's Control-V. And I'm just going to type in the number three there and look at how the, uh, each of these percent differences are getting smaller. Now this one pipe where there isn't much flow, pipe BC, is an outlier, but I don't worry too much about it because I know what's really happening is that you have some delta Q added to an already small flow rate Q and on a percentage basis it looks bigger than it is. The thing to, uh, to look at is, are the F values converging and are the flow rates converging? So look at the F values. The F values aren't changing much from iteration to iteration. The F values have essentially converged. All right, now what about the flow rates? The flow rates are getting there, 0 0.581, 0 0.585, and so we're still not down to like absolute convergence, and so You'll notice on the uh, solution that I gave you, I went through four iterations. And so I'll do that fourth iteration here. Uh, control C and then Control V to paste. And then now the flow rates match what I'm expecting. On the flip side of the paper handout that I gave you, is the solution after the fourth iteration. So 0.581 for pipe AB. Okay, the last thing that this example is asking is what's the pressure at each junction? So we've determined the flow rates. How do we find out the pressure at each junction? Well, the uh, the Darcy-Wiesbach equation will allow us to calculate losses. Remember that the, uh, the losses are calculated. Head loss is R times Q to the power of N. So if we have some starting pressure here at A, 
Our starting pressure is known as uh, 600 kilopascals. So 600 kilopascals is the same as a head of, so we'll say 600 kilopascals divided by 9.81 kilonewtons. Hmm. What just happened? So it is the pressure divided by 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter. So that gives us 61.162 meters of head at junction A. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of pressure at each junction based on this one control point. This is something you're going to do in your project as well. The idea of a control point is maybe in another uh, phraseology it's known as a boundary condition. It's a location where you have a measurement, a direct measurement of something and all of the rest of your predicted values are tied into reality with that one uh, starting point. So the pressure at B is going to be less, or excuse me, the head at B is going to be less, and therefore the pressure, assuming that all of the elevations are constant. And you'll see I've given the formula here of what we're going to do to calculate the, uh, the pressure at that location. So the head is the head at A minus the losses through pipe A, A, A B. So we have those losses through pipe AB. That is, uh, we're going to do R times Q time to the power of N for pipe AB. So R for pipe AB, here it is. The, here's the R value times Q to the power of 2. Okay, so we know that there's 57.672 meters, and so then the pressure is going to be that head divided by 9.81 times. Yes, thank you. Good catch. Yeah. All right, so that's the pressure at junction B. All right, so if we know the pressure at B, then we can calculate the pressure at C, and it's plus because we're going against the flow. So it is the head at B plus the head loss through pipe B, uh, C. Okay, so that's going to be the R value through B, C. So here's the R times Q. And maybe we should use the absolute value of Q. Oh, no, the square will take care of it. So Q squared. Okay, so that's how much head we have. The head at uh, D is, again, plus because we're going against flow. So it's the previous head plus the R value times the flow rate squared. The head at E. Now this is minus because of the flow direction. We're going, if, the, uh, if you're going from C to E, then you're losing head. So it's the previous head minus R value through pipe CE. So here's that R value times the flow rate squared. Plus. No, I did minus. All right. And then finally, uh, junction F is going to be plus. And so it is the amount that there was at E plus the losses.
So these are the pressures. It looks like uh, in the solution that I did in previous semesters, I might have had a mistake. I think that it is 550 rather than 549.0, which is what it says on that handout. It's a slight difference, you know, like one kilopascal, but that's the method that we can use to uh, estimate the uh, pressures at each junction with a given control point. All right, so be sure to save your file so that you can come back to it after the class if you need to finish up or if you have questions, I can go over it with you. What we're going to do now is try and move away from the spreadsheet. You've been you know, like staring at the abstract for so long that uh, let's solve a problem on the paper just as uh, not only good practice for the Hayes and Williams equation, but also to get out of the minutia of problem solving with the spreadsheet. So I have two in-class exercise questions for you. One is in the traditional units, one is in the SI units. And so on the handout I'm giving you, I've got the formulas that you'll need on each page. The first one's a horizontal pipe. The second one's not a horizontal pipe. And I kind of give you an idea of what is the elevation difference from the upstream and the downstream location. So the formulas on, on each of these, remember, for SI units, you need to have the hydraulic radius in meters. S sub F is the slope of the energy grade line. And then on the back side, the hydraulic radius will be in feet length in feet, velocity, feet per second, and so on. Ah. How did I miss the front row? There you go. All right, so how easy this is depends on if you remember the definition of H sub F and S sub F. And this one's easy since it's horizontal. The head loss is just the change in pressure divided by gamma. So that's the solution to the first problem, 124.3 liters per second. Notice that in the problem statement, it said what units are needed for the flow rate, so liters per second. All right, so we've got water flowing through a pipe. Looks like the pipe is sloped downhill. We're trying to find the pressure at the downstream location. And what we're given is the flow velocity, 3.5 feet per second. We've got the water density that's known. Based on the fact that it's cast iron, we're using a C value of 100. And the length between the two points is 1,800 feet. So the version of the uh, equation that we're going to use is this one. We're going to put it into the energy equation, and here, the Hazen-Williams equation will be used to estimate the head loss due to pipe friction. All right, so you can see the first thing I did was I converted the given pressure in PSI, pounds per square inch, into pounds per uh, square foot. So you multiply by 144, since there are 144 um, square inches in a square foot. Now we've got our length, velocity, diameter, needs to be in feet, by the way, for us to substitute it into the Hazen-Williams equation. And that tells us that there's 39.82 feet of head loss. Now here's the energy equation. We know that the pipe diameter is the same at location 1 and location 2. And if the diameter isn't changing, you know, it's just a constant diameter pipe, that means that the velocity at both locations has to stay the same due to the continuity equation. 
So the substitution is going to be that we rearrange for the pressure in terms of P2. So you see that the pressure at 2 depends on the sum of the pressure head and elevation at 1 minus the elevation at 2 minus the losses. And so um, and you can see the numbers on the screen there. In the end, it turns out to uh, 62.9 pounds per square inch.